All right, so with this model, all we really have are the two paired kidneys. Otherwise, this model's not very useful as far as the urinary system is concerned. Okay. Okay, so just the two paired kidneys. With this one, it's got some good and some bad parts to it in the sense that this is the kidney, obviously. Then we have the cortex, the cortex, that outer area. I could use it for the renal pyramids, which are here, 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 and here. I could use it for the minor calyx, which are these spaces here that drain each renal pyramid. Um, I think that I would use this maybe for the renal pelvis, and then this for the ureter, renal artery, renal vein. To be honest with you, that's about all I like about this model. It's just an older model that's seen some wear and tear. Okay. Um, I do like this model. Uh, again, the paired kidneys. And we have the descending abdominal aorta. And then blood is going to go into the kidney through the renal artery. It's going to go through the kidney and come back out the renal vein here in the blue and end up with the inferior vena cava. This is the start of the ureter, and it's gonna come down and gonna attach at the back of the bladder in males. So this whole structure right here, the yellow, white yellow is, is the bladder. And if I open that up, in the orange right here, going through the prostate, that's the start of the urethra. So that's a pretty good model for that. Now, we're going to spend a little time here because this is going to be complicated, and if I had, I'm going to use a couple of colored pencils, and we're going to walk through the blood flow. Number 14, we're going to start with number 14. That's the renal artery, and as soon as an artery or a vein forks, its name changes. So the next vessel is the segmental artery between here and here. You'll notice I've got a line there. Underneath this minor calyx, from this point to this point, right here is the lobar artery. Then we have the interlobar artery until we get up to about where we start to curve. And I like to, I'll show it to you on this model and then I'll show it on the blown up version. This is the RQ8 artery that comes around. And this is the interlobular artery that's going to go up into the cortex. Now, some other structures, just to get those out of the way. Again, the renal pyramid. Each one of these is a renal pyramid. We have the papillae of the pyramid, which is this flattened area right here where the urine is going to collect. We have the minor calyx. And then number 12, the major calyx. And then this large open region that you'll see essentially back behind here, between 12 and 13, that's the renal pelvis. And this is the ureter. Again, cortex and medulla. Now let's blow up one of these renal pyramids. And we're going to make it bigger. If I do that, you ready? Mm -hmm. If I do that from this start point right here to this one, in between the renal pyramids, this is called the interlobar artery. Okay. I come around the top. This is the RQ8. It comes around the arch of the top, our RQ8 artery. I'm going to take a left at the interlobular artery. And then I'm going to move towards the glomerulus. And when I do that, this little vessel right here is the afferent, with an A, arteriole. The blood is going to go through the glomerular capillaries, or the glomerulus. Which is one of these is, guys blown yeah, up. But we're going to stay with this one. Okay. It's going to come back out, the efferent arteriole. It's going to go through some capillaries that you can't see on these models, the peritubular and the vasa recta. It's going to come back here, right, and it's going to meet with the interlobular vein, the arcuate vein, the interlobar vein, and the difference between the veins and the arteries is that there are less of them. So this interlobar vein runs all the way down here until it meets with the renal vein. Okay. 
and then it will go to the inferior vena cava. All right, so we blow up one of these guys, all right, a glomerulus in the Bowman's capsule. We blow that up. We've got the afferent arterial. It's thicker, all right? It's got a larger overall diameter when it comes to size, all right? Letting blood into the glomerulus. And then the blood and all the formed elements will come back out the efferent arterial. But some of the fluid, the filtrate is what it's called when it comes out, will actually move into this structure down here, number 35, which is the proximal convoluted tubule. This cup that surrounds the glomerulus is called the Bowman's capsule. And I think that does it. Okay. As far as the reproductive structures are concerned, really I have them out just solely so you can see the bladder placement in males. Again, the bladder is traditionally larger in males, and males have a long urethra that's going to pass all the way through the penis. All right. In females, bladder is essentially below the uh, uterus. uterus. Thank you very much. I had a moment where I couldn't think of the word. All right. Below the uterus, and again, the urethra all right, below that, where you see number seven. And in females, it is shorter than in males. And in males, it's also involved in the reproductive system where it's completely separate from the reproductive system in females. Okay. That's it? That's it. Thank you. You bet.